Hello, and welcome to Redirected on the River. We'll be taking you along as we cruise our local waterways in our Ranger Tug, Redirected. In this episode, we cruise the urban riverfront parks, starting in downtown Tampa and through the Seminole Heights and Sulphur Springs neighborhoods. After entering the mouth of the Hillsborough River and going under the Platte Street Bridge, we are immediately flanked by parks. Tony Janus Park to Port and USF Riverside Park to Starboard. Tony Janus Park honors the famed aviator who in 1914 piloted the world's first scheduled airline flight, which originated in St. Petersburg and landed in Tampa just 23 minutes later. USF Park on the Riverwalk acknowledges the many contributions the University of South Florida has made to the community. However, the park itself is really just a nicely landscaped part of the larger Riverwalk. But as we're both USF alumni, we proudly say, Go Bulls, and include the park in this episode. Next is McDill Park, and features displays about the history of the Air Force Base, which is home to U.S. Central Command, U.S. Special Operations Command, and the 6th Air Refueling Wing. Farther into downtown and across from the University of Tampa, we come to Curtis Hickson Park, whose namesake was a pharmacist turned politician that served on city council, the county commission, and finally mayor. The Tampa Museum of Art and the Glacier Children's Museum border the park. Julian B. Lane Park recently received a more than $30 million facelift, with a bulk of the funding coming from the BP oil spill settlement. This brought the addition of floating docks, a walkway over the river, sculptures and other art, and the Tampa River Center, which serves as the base for the many rowing teams that practice on the river. Waterworks Park encompasses the Eulalie Spring, which was an early source of Tampa's drinking water. An excellent restaurant operates in the original water pumping station, and there's also a splash pad for the kitties and a dog park. The band shell frequently features open air concerts on the lawn. As we continue, the river becomes lined in waterfront residences. Reed Park does not have many amenities, but perhaps the most important feature is the stormwater mitigation pond and canal that keeps litter on the street from being washed down the drains and into the river. Farther into Seminole Heights, we come to Rivercrest Park. Here you will find beautiful Grand Oaks, a kayak launch, gazebo, and playground. Ignacio Haya Linear Park honors an entrepreneur in Tampa's booming cigar industry and a philanthropist supporting thousands that labored in the rolling factories and tobacco plantations. There's an art bench with blown glass embedded that I quite like. Epps Park is a peaceful pocket park and is great for spotting gators, manatees, and wading birds. I honestly don't know the history of the name Epps. I did find reference to a police officer that died while on duty. Leave a comment in the video if you know. Lowry Park is very popular with trailer boaters as it is the only public ramp on the lower Hillsborough River. The ramp and docks are being renovated as I speak, in fact. There are dozens of picnic pavilions, and Zoo Tampa is across the street. The homes on the river get more and more eclectic as we move upstream, and the docks and backyards engage the river. 
Rounding this bend reveals an iconic and fabled structure, the Sulphur Springs Tower. Built in 1927, the tower stored water at the top, pumped from an artesian well at the base until 1971. In the 50s, the Tower Drive-In opened adjacent to the tower. Although the drive-in is shuttered and was demolished in 1985, you can still see the arc of the parking lot in aerial photos. On the other side of Interstate 275, we find the Sulphur Springs Park and Pool. The site was a tourist attraction in the Roaring Twenties that welcomed visitors to swim in the spring, tour an alligator farm, and shop in the arcade. Today the spring is closed for swimming, unless you're one of the manatees that are often sighted here, but there is a public pool and splash pad. From here the river gets a bit tighter, bendy, and shallow as we approach Hillsborough County's Man Wangan Park. Originally the site of the county's Natural History Museum, the park is now home to a local not-for-profit that benefits youth in the neighborhood and the Sulphur Springs Museum and Heritage Center. The park bears the name of longtime and prominent Sulphur Springs residents. The adventure continues to Patterson Park, and I think there must be a spring nearby. Every time I'm here, there's crystal clear water meandering to the river. Park Circle might be one of the smallest parks in Tampa, but it's not the smallest, however. That moniker goes to Snow Park near the University of Tampa, which according to Ripley's is the smallest municipal park in the world. The last park we can venture past before the water gets too shallow is Allen Wright Park. Known as Mr. River, Wright spent more than 20 years working to protect the river. There's a small spring that flows seasonally. It's a small park honoring a great man. From here, the river is best explored by kayak, but I would like to mention the last park on the lower Hillsborough River. The name of Rollette Park is another mystery to me, but the park is notable for its size and the large dam that creates the Hillsborough Reservoir, which is the city's primary source of municipal water. In the past, during times of drought, the dam gates were shut completely to preserve reservoir levels, but this choked off flow to the lower river. After much lobbying and research from concerned citizens, a project was completed to pump water from the Sulphur Spring through an underground pipe and discharge it just below the dam, thereby keeping a healthy flow moving through the river. So that wraps up today's tour. We've covered nine miles up the river and featured 16 parks. I hope you explore them as well. Bye for now.